Shut up and sit down. Welcome to Sarge Approved with your host Sarge and Frenzy. Hello. We are here with Larry Venturino, comedian and record label What's owner. Up? How's it going, Larry? Good, how are you? We're doing great. We're glad to have you. We're soup- yeah, no problem. We're soup dupes, I'm- great. Yeah. I'm actually sitting outside in my shorts right now in Florida. You guys are probably <laughs> under, like, what, 10 feet of snow already <laughs> yeah, in Minnesota? Much. Pretty much. It's like negative 15 with the wind. There's a wind chill advisory actually right now. Oh. It's zero Ooh. degrees outside. Yeah, if it starts getting a little bit breezy here, it's going to drop down to like 75 right now. Oh, so. oh no. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're pretty jealous of you right now. Super oh, jealous. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Um, let me get this out of the way. This episode is sponsored by National Survival Center. Uh, nice. The guys over at National Survival Center have everything you need when you're looking for camping gear, outdoor gear. Uh, you're looking to uh, stock up on your survival gear supply. You, uh, your fear that the zombies are going to attack or uh, a nuke is going to drop on us or Russia's going to invade. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to make sure you're prepared, right? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So if you're looking for tents or, or knives or swords to cut zombies' heads off, uh, machetes, blaze a trail, they've got survival food, uh, binoculars, night vision, I mean, pretty much anything under the sun when it comes to uh, gear. And they'll, uh, they'll, What's that? They'll assist you with pitching a tent over there if they're going right into the, into the business or what? What's that? They'll help you pitch a tent if you go right into the business. They'll <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. walk you through it. Okay, good. Yeah, yep. Let, yep. Let's, let's show you how it's done. Um, it's uh, they got free shipping on pretty much all their gear. Um, I think everything but survival food. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all top of the line stuff. They uh, it's hand tested by the owners. So uh, and it's all name brand stuff. The same thing you're gonna find at the big box stores, except they only carry things that they know um, is quality quality gear. And uh, you can find them at nationalsurvivalcenter.com, or if you're feeling lazy and you don't want to type so many letters into your browser, you can go to survivedontsuffer.com. So check those guys out, get yourself stocked up on some gear, and uh, make sure you're prepared. National Survival Center, survive, don't suffer. Don't suffer, don't do it. Don't do it at all. Frenzy does not like it when people suffer. No, uh, it makes me sad. Unnecessarily. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't think I need any survival gear right now. Just like laying out here, no big deal. I'm good. You might need some sunscreen, um, like that. Might yeah, be exactly. Good. <laughs> exactly. You might need a machete in case a gator crawls into your backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had that happen? Any gator um, sightings? Gators, like about two houses down from me, there's a lake, and so gators come up walking through our yard what? from time to time. Yep. We have, we actually have bears here and deer and. Wild hogs and everything that kind of roam through our yard. It's kind of cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's I'm very sure cool. I'm sure we got a lot more wildlife up, to, up there, too. <clears throat> well, we don't have gators roaming through our yard. We don't have giant lizards from the dinosaur, dinosaur age. age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so that's just normal for you. Like, that's just like, oh, another gator. Yeah, no big deal. Right? Just hanging out, walking down, uh, across the street. You know, no big deal. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was actually. Uh, doing some yard work one time and like like looked behind me and like a six foot alligator was like walking about 10 feet away from me like crossing what? over to the street yeah so i was like oh, i'm good i'm glad i you know kind of turned around at that point yeah <laughs> don't you have to worry about like you know small pets or children or anything yeah bumping into an Gone. alligator getting snatched <laughs> up yeah That's absolutely crazy. yeah huh. Really God. small ladies, yeah. Just <laughs> small eating ladies. Alive. <laughs> I don't think that's something I could get used to. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like another thing. <laughs> um, so you're coming to us from Florida. Um, yeah. you're the first guest we've had uh, from Florida. Yeah, we're in Florida. Uh, I live in Southwest Florida. It's like the Fort Myers Naples area, which is about like two hours south of Tampa, two okay. hours west of, uh, west of Miami. Okay. Yeah, so I've been down here a long time. I'm actually originally from Rhode Island, though, so I'm I'm kind of used to the 
you know, being up north and the snow and everything else like that. But I've been down here a long time, so. What brought you to Florida? Uh, when I graduated from high school, I ended up coming to college down in Florida. So I kind of just stayed here. I got a job, and the rest is history pretty much. Nice. Yeah. And you're a man of many talents, I understand. Oh. You're a, oh. you're a hilarious stand-up comedian. I've, I've heard some of your stuff, and I was laughing the whole time. You're, oh, good. Thank you're, you. Yeah, you're very well-spoken and, and confident on stage. And um, engaging, you engage. Oh. Yeah. Oh, great! Thank you. Definitely a fan yeah. of your comedy. Yeah. Um, but you also own a your corner of a record label, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. From uh, since uh, 2001, um, I founded a hardcore punk record label called Think Fast Records, and um, you know I, I do with my buddy Brian, who actually lives up in Maine, and uh, we've put out. Uh, I think we're on like uh, we're over 60 releases at this point and basically just do uh, punk rock hardcore um, 2016 our releases in 2016 were kind of a little bit more on the metalish uh, side but mm-hmm. um, yeah so we do like basically you know aggressive uh, music basically uh, basically so yeah doing yeah 15 years or so and wow. it's going awesome. well and yeah thank you do you do bands co- come to you or do you guys kind of research new bands that you want to have on the label or how does that work uh, the music industry has completely changed over the last several years yeah. um, we get a lot of demos um, some people will still send demos in the mail but <laughs> obviously a lot of times uh, we'll just get digital uh, press kits that we we will look over okay. um, but you know the music industry has completely changed um, for punk rock and hardcore music um, vinyl is is king basically um, we haven't we haven't made a CD since 2008 CDs are completely gone really um, well, in regards cool. to our, yeah to our music because everything's digital but in our style right. of music people want a physical copy of a record and so collecting vinyl is actually a big thing within the punk rock and hardcore community so we continue to release vinyl records for for bands and then uh, we usually include a digital download card with it so that they can, you know, they can put on their iPod or, or whatever. Uh, so we kind of do a little bit of, of that. But CD is completely gone, hmm. and all our stuff comes out on vinyl. That's awesome. Yeah. Vinyl. Yeah, it's yeah. making a comeback. It's, it seems like vinyl has is, is been an increasingly more popular um, thing that is, has come back into the <clears> – <throat> The, the main picture yeah in the music yeah industry. absolutely so what are some of the bands that you kind of grew up listening to that maybe i mean obviously you're a fan of music so mm-hmm. what were some of the bands that inspired you to to want to do this oh well you know it took a it took a little while like when i was like kind of an early teenager i started getting into punk rock and hardcore with bands like minor threat sick of it all uh agnostic front uh, a lot of new york um hardcore and punk bands the Ramones, uh, the Ramones I was really into, um, you know, but growing up, like I remember being like four years old, roller skating in my driveway, listening to Twisted Sister, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, bands like that, like Van Halen, Aerosmith, like some of the, like, the old, like, ro- like rock bands and everything that kind of influenced me. But I also was really big into like the eighties, um, like new wave, because that's what the time, you know, I was living in, like, I, I love the cure. Mm-hmm. Depeche Mode, all that kind of stuff too. So, uh, so kind of a little bit of a variety of music. But then when I was like a teenager, I started getting introduced to more into punk rock and and hardcore music, and kind of was like basically took over my life and really got involved with that. And you were um, actually, you were actually in uh, you the front man of a few punk rock bands, weren't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, from I was in I've been in three. Um, you know. Uh, the, the first two were, you know, we did some touring and stuff like that and uh, played with a lot of, you know, great bands and traveled some places. Uh, nothing, uh, the, but the bands didn't really gain like a huge notoriety or anything like that. The last band I played in was a, a Miami band called uh, Where Fair and Weapons Meet. And uh, they were kind of the bigger bigger band for that style of music that I was into. That was uh, your band? A, a part of. And, uh so we, we played some shows together. But, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. It actually 
punk rock and hardcore music actually um, taught me a lot of things. Like basically, you know, my my partner and I, who my business partner and I, uh, who run Think Fast Records, um, both both of us have played in bands, and just being in a band, um, promoting ourselves, touring, running that as kind of like a business taught us how to run Think Fast Records, and from there, like being on stage playing shows like in different states all over the place um, really took away um, a huge obstacle that most stand-up comics have when they start comedy, which mm-hmm. is basically getting on stage and performing in front of somebody. I had already done it. Yeah. Granted, yeah, granted it was a different, you know, a different... Platform. Yeah, platform, but um, it, the stage fright wasn't there, you know. I, w- I had already done this. I had already performed in front of people, so that obstacle... I had already kind of squashed. Yeah. Um, yes, but you know, a little bit of a different animal when you're by yourself doing comedy. Uh, but at least I kind of had something under my belt to kind of know what to do. You know. Yeah. How to hold a mic and things like that. Right. So. So when you guys were doing the band stuff, you didn't have like a manager that was scheduling stuff for you. You guys did that all yourself. Yeah, totally DIY punk mm-hmm. rock style. Like uh, this was some of this was even you know very skin and bones like internet time where like uh, you know you had to call people up and send letters and get um figure out how you're gonna uh when you're gonna do shows like what states who's booking uh shows in different states and it was a lot more difficult than you know to get in touch with people than than nowadays so um yeah you kind of just basically pick up the phone and call the people you thought book shows in different states Booked the shows, hit the road, and hopefully those people were there when you showed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you, yeah. I can see how you got over the the whole um, stage fright thing when it comes to comedy because starting out in a punk rock band, um, not only were you getting experience on stage, but you were on stage screaming at people. Yeah, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah that's, basically, it's got to be yeah, an I ultimate mean, way of getting over yeah. stage fright, where you're up there just screaming out songs. And, yeah. uh, and in a, in a, I mean, that's an extreme way of getting over stage fright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's basically, you know, forcing people to look at you. Yeah. yeah. You know, forcing, forcing people to listen to what you have to say because, believe it or not, like whether you're familiar with punk rock or hardcore music, it, it has a message. And the bands that I was in um, actually had a really positive message. Um, uh, when we, the, the lyrics that I wrote and everything, I try to be more uplifting and try to um, have a, something that, you know, so for kids to have like a positive outlook when they when they came to see our band. And, you know, because punk rock, hardcore is kind of like, you know, some some people think that they're like outcasts in our society. You know, they you know they don't want to hang out with this group of kids, this group of kids, but they found this scene where people were talking about and doing the things that they love to do, the style of music that they wanted to hear. So we wanted to take those kids and, and actually have a positive message, not just telling them to waste their life away, but rather to make the most out of their life. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so, you know, that's the kind of the style and the, and the, and the you know, the philosophy that I had when we, when we played in bands. So, yeah, you're screaming at them. Um, basically, this is my voice, this is what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen to me. So it's basically like, who, you know they're scared scared to listen to you <laughs> whether you know <laughs> instead of you being on stage with, with stage fright you know you're forcing people to pay attention to what you have to say yeah, yeah. so i want to i want to hear some of your songs do you um will you be able to send us after uh tomorrow or something will you be able to send us um any, well, of, your, yeah. any of your past songs yeah. definitely i'll um i can send you you know a couple of videos maybe and um you know, um, maybe direct you to where you can hear some of the music and everything. It's been a, my first band. It's we've been broken up since two thousand one, <laughs> so it's like um, you know, there's records out there and stuff like that. But it's um, I'll kind of tell you how to find that that music. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's it's hard to for me to picture after seeing your comedy. Um, it's, hard, <laughs> it's hard for me to picture because you just seem like such a nice guy. You know. Oh, thank you, thank um, you. <laughs> you know, just like. It's it's hard to picture you seeing those two totally different um, uh, genres, you know, 
a c- comedian and uh, well-spoken comedian and uh, front front man of a, of a punk rock band. Yeah, that's, that's that's funny you say that because basically the comedian that helped get me started um, uh, with in comedy is a guy named Frank Del Pizzo. Um He's originally from New Jersey, but he um, he's uh, he lives down here in Florida, and he was there the first night I tried stand up, and. Um, and he was, uh, and basically he was like, you know, why weren't you skater on stage? And I'm like, well, I played in a punk rock band, you know, before, and uh, so I'm kind of not afraid to be on stage. And so now we do a lot of shows together. And he, sometimes he'll bring me up on stage and say, oh, can you believe this guy? Like he used to sing in a punk band, <laughs> and like, and nobody can believe it. And I was like, well, um, just just a regular dude, and you know, you know, I'm getting a little bit older now, but yeah, we. I guess it was there were some people who might have been a little bit crazy, but again, we had a positive message, and it was like a fun thing to do. Like we like fast, aggressive music, and and so, um, but I know how to kind of calm down and be serious, and or go up on stage and and tell jokes in a in a more sophisticated way. I guess you would say, yeah. yeah. You can't judge a bush but a book by its cover, obviously. A bush yeah. you can. A bush. <laughs> a bush you can judge. <laughs> I judge bushes all day long. <laughs> so what um what's what one of your favorite venues to perform at, uh, comedy wise in Florida? Well, the two main clubs that I perform at down here in Florida are Laugh In Comedy Cafe and Off the Hook Comedy Club. And um, both get really great names coming in to the club. Um Basically, anyone will have me. I do private shows. I do, like, corporate events. I do, like, um, sometimes restaurants and little um, places down here have um, comedy shows, like, once a night, uh, once a week. And, cool. Um, so, like, I get booked at places like that. Um, so it doesn't matter. Anyone who wants to, you know, book me and let me tell some jokes, so, like, I'm, I'm – all for it, you know. Um, been doing comedy for a couple of year, a little over a couple of years now, and um, constantly just getting, getting shows and just trying my best. Like anytime I someone wants to put me on stage, I'll I'll do it. Doesn't matter where it is. So yeah, um, yeah, it doesn't matter at all. You've only been doing comedy for a couple of years now. Yeah, I saw yeah. that on your Instagram. It was, what's it like? Been two years? Yeah, September two thousand fourteen. I started. Yeah, and, wow. yeah so. That's impressive yeah. because it oh, seems you. like you've been doing it for a long time. You you don't seem like you, you seem like you're completely confident on stage and you you've got your your act down pat and it's really surprising that you've only been doing it for a couple of years. That's impressive. Oh. oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's like well, here's the way I you know I look at it. You know, um, you know I, I have a, a regular career as well, a, a day job basically as as, as you call it. And I have two kids and. Um, I really work hard at everything I do, and um, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I don't want to waste my own time. I don't want to have to leave my kids when um, to have a show and then get up on stage and completely just make a joke out of myself. Yeah, sure, right. people aren't, uh, people aren't into me sometimes, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not for everybody, um, but I put 110 percent into everything I do, so I'm I'm prepared when I go on stage, and I don't want to take time like my free time or, or my time away from my kids and, and waste it yeah. mm-hmm. so um i really I always practice 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 so whenever i get up on stage I, like i try to make the most out of it you know sometimes shows don't go as well as the last one but um you know but you just you know, I, I give it all i have you know what i mean so well yeah and sometimes i think that's just the crowd and you don't have any control over that you know yeah. i mean it oh, just that. is what it is but that's awesome that you that you're passionate about it and you know put in the effort it's yeah good. thank you yeah like this is a, a huge social experiment basically like doing comedy like especially when you have like two or three shows in one night the, I think the most I've done was like three three shows in a row at a club wow um, like, really um, awesome. and from one crowd one show to the next it's unbelievable you could be telling the same doing the same set yeah. And one crowd, one crowd completely hates you, <laughs> or um, or just like, eh, he was okay. And then the next crowd is like, you know, you're Jerry Seinfeld. Like, where did that come from? You know, yeah. um, or you can get really hyped, like like having a great, great, great show, and then you do another show, and they're like, wow, 
who is this guy? Like, he's terrible or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you, there's a lot of highs and lows and it's a real mental, like, exercise, basically, because it's like, you have to, like, I, I joke about, it, I'm like, oh my God, why do I do this sometimes? It's like, you know, the ego, like the emotional roller coaster that you can go on, like, oh, I had a great show. And then, you know, two hours later, like, it's like a completely different world, you know? Yeah. So, That's got to be yeah. hard, too, to kind of gauge how well um, your jokes are doing or a particular set or a particular part of your set when mm-hmm. you have one show where everyone seems like they're just not getting it and then the next show everyone loves it and yeah. it, that's got to be hard to gauge like if okay this joke didn't work last show but it's working this show is it is this something I should keep is this something I should rework or completely throw out it's yeah gotta, absolutely it's, it's yeah you difficult. keep on working on your stuff like and you know you give it like if you have like say you have a new joke and I usually try to try it out at a couple of shows and if it's definitely not working like after a couple of shows then maybe it's it needs to be reworked or you know put aside until I come up with something a little bit better um, but for the most part I do my thing one night a joke might do really well where it doesn't the next crowd um, but I get up and do my thing like you can't really judge whether or not um, an older crowd is not going to like certain jokes because sometimes the older people are 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 actually more into some of the the dirtier stuff than younger people. Um, yeah. It, and, and the biggest problem right now is like the younger people, like the college crowd, sometimes are so politically correct and so uptight about things oh. that it's like it, it's a it's it's a, it's unbelievable. You think that they would be open to here and whatever and then they're more uptight than like senior citizens that come to the show you know you, so. can, you can say it Larry it's the hipsters right oh yeah <laughs> they're offended by everything I know um, <laughs> you know the millennial the, hipsters the millennial <laughs> I actually have a new joke kind of like about the millennials too like because I guess that's what I am but like it's just like everything they think that they're standing up for something like they don't even know who is offended what should be offensive I don't, they don't know what they're doing they're running around in circles and uh so they're offended by everything just to be safe i guess but, yeah they're, they're like proactively yeah. searching for things to be offended by right. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> let's see let's scour the internet and see what i can get pissed off about today yeah uh-huh. yeah i'm gonna write like a nine page a, a nine paragraph essay on Facebook about <laughs> what you're doing, yeah. Right, and they're doing that because they need validation. That's why. I'm, oh yeah. See, I'm I'm supposedly a gen a gen Xer, so Sorry. I basically just like work my ass off and don't expect any any mm. validation. I just do it. Yeah. Versus like millennials like yourself, mm. supposedly who mm. need to need that constant validation all the time. I'm yeah, still a whole generation of people that have been coddled their whole life. Right. You know, I actually did an interview earlier today for a website and about actually talked about parenting. And I basically said, you know, the way I raise my kids, I teach them, you know, life is not fair. It was a lot of people my age who grew up thinking that life is fair and it's not like who told you this? You know, get over it. How you know, great. you have to work. You have to work hard. You're not a victim. It's you know, not all just, about you all the time. Right, absolutely. Just because you failed doesn't mean the whole world was against you. You just have to pick yourself up and, and try harder. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and it makes you stronger. Yeah, yeah absolutely. H- how old are you, Larry? I'm 38. Okay. Oh, you're, mm. you're, you're a young man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, 30, I'm 33. We're not, we're not that far apart. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, Wait until you get to 38 and see how you're, you know. <laughs> my body's already breaking down. I feel like I'm twice the age that I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. I I've mean, I, I get home, I play, I play sports with my kids outside and stuff like that. I was like, I was like, I suit up in like street hockey goalie pads the other day. And like, <laughs> I was trying to like go all out and stuff with these like, nine and ten and eleven year olds on my street <laughs> and like I think I pinched a nerve in my back because I was like trying to be like an NHL superstar but so that didn't really work out it's sad there was a, a couple months ago I had just come home and I sneezed really hard and I swear I almost threw my back out oh yeah I That's sneezed <laughs> I sneezed and I almost dropped to my knees it was, yeah. and, and I was more um, upset that 
my back gave up from a sneeze than the actual pain. Yeah. <laughs> I was driving. I was like, it's really? Over, man. It's Come all on. downhill now. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you told me about that, and your back was sore for like a week. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, very emasculating. That's yeah. what happens when you get old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, yeah, man. it's you're you're an impressive man, Larry. You've oh you, thank you. You've got a lot of things going on for you. You seem like you've got a good head on your shoulders. You seem like you're one of the good guys, and um, I, the world needs yeah. more good guys. We've got That's, plenty of bad guys hopefully. in this world. We need sorry, more good but... guys. <laughs> um, I mean, it's like I said, the it's impressive. You've only been doing comedy for two years, but um, just based on your stage presence presence alone but you've also you're 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 doing regular gigs you don't you host a show at one of those comedy clubs don't you yeah i hope i host a, a monthly showcase there to kind of showcase uh comics that maybe have never been to the club before and help get them in front of the booker uh for the club so that they can get paid work at the clubs and come back for full weekends of shows and things like that so it's kind of like Kind of like the same philosophy I had, like when we I would bunk, uh, book like punk rock shows. It's like, you know, kind of getting the talent, go, looking out uh, for the talent myself, and and booking them, and then trying to, you know, help them to get, you know, to a different level or to get into a club that they hadn't been to before. Yeah, right. Um, that sounds and I, I appreciate I appreciate all the kind words and stuff like that too. I, basically, I, I just try to make the most out of my life, you know. Um, you know, I was married before and everything, and everything. You know that that was fine and whatnot. Granted, I got divorced and that stuff, but it was like <laughs> it was okay. It's like after that, I was like, you gotta make the most out of every day of your life. You, you know. So since then, like I just do. You know, if if I have a goal or want to do something or I've never tried something, I'm gonna tr- go out and do it. You know, not like stupid stuff that are, like reckless stuff that ruins my life, but rather. You know, I'm gonna go for it. You know, you, you're only here once. You have to make a mark on this on this world and 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 do things that uh, when you're when you're gone, you can you know hopefully people uh, people will look back and remember you for it or something. You know, mm-hmm. live live like in an important life. Right, and also you yourself being satisfied with what you're doing. I mean, yeah, right. That's exactly yeah. what I was gonna say. You're you're. You're living a life that makes you happy. You're doing something that you generally um, enjoy doing. You're not just working a nine to five job behind a desk and just uh, toiling away every day, making money for somebody else. Yeah, right. Making somebody else rich while you get your little cut, your little paycheck, and just being miserable. You're actually going out there and you're going balls to the wall, and you're accomplishing all your dreams. And that's that's really impressive, and that's uh, that's inspirational. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope everyone does. I, I, that's why I teach my my kids. I mean, if you want to do something, don't let anyone hold you back from from doing something. Um, like I said, I, I mean, I have I have my you know day career as well. You know, I'm a social worker as well. Uh, I've been doing that for 16 years, and um, that's kind of a, a, like allowed me to be able to uh, do some of these other things and, and go for some of these like dreams that I had to do and. You know, help start my my record company by having a, a you know a real job that helped pay the bills, so that I could take these other risks and do things that I really wanted to do, mm-hmm. uh, and, and also be stable. You know, so um, yeah, it's basically like you know you're going for it, um, you know, but also being stable underneath that too. You know, what I mean, not like completely being reckless about like oh I'm just gonna pick up and move like I don't know. Like three thousand miles test. away and and <laughs> not have any plan, you know. No, like I'm gonna just do my best and slowly just work myself up, hopefully, and to and to reach different goals that I set for myself. There, there's got to be something to um, to be said too about the the kind of person that oh, the that has gone. It's good. Okay. Yeah. There's also got to be something to be said about um, the individual that does just just throw caution to the wind and goes for their dream like we we, we get a lot of co- we have a lot of co- stand-up comedians um on the show and um a lot of them are are guys that are have been doing it for just you know a short time they're they're trying to make a name for themselves 
sure. and uh, and they're working their way up. Like we we had a past guest, uh, Paul Soltis. Um, what up, Paul? Hey, Paul. Um, he um, he's young. He's what twenty. Two, 22 I think yeah young, young guy so but he doesn't have kids or a wife or, or anything like that and mm-hmm. his dream was to be on Saturday Night Live or one, a place one, to live one day yeah <laughs> and, and he decided that he was going to go and chase his dream and he just packed a bag and moved to New York City and he didn't have any plan really I mean no no home no job um, lined up before he got there but he's going after it and yeah uh, good for him and and I hope that um, the the past guests or or, or, or uh, future guests or even anyone else that's listening that um, you know that they can hear your story and use it as inspiration and, and and know that that's it's something they can achieve that they can that'll motivate them to keep pushing and keep trying and not give up on on their dream because you're oh, doing yeah. it. I don't know how you have time. I don't know how you get all this done. You're a social worker. You own a record label. You're two kids. A, you have two kids. <laughs> you're a comedian. I, I don't yeah. know how you do it, man. It's it's impressive. <laughs> oh, so you just keep going. Like just keep yourself busy and stuff like that. That's I don't know. Sometimes I don't understand like how it all works, but it, somehow it, it it runs. Like I get it all done, and um, you know we do a lot of things with the with the kids. Um, travel with them and bring them to concerts or whatever. Um, different places um it's really important me, for me to do that and you know talking about uh, paul you know he's younger and you know he, like you said he doesn't he's not married or um have kids and stuff like that which is you know fine go out there and and chase that that dream but you know um five years ago i i adopted my two boys and um and so that that i did that before i started comedy and mm-hmm. so my pri- my priority is my kids, um, mm-hmm. you know, and I have to pay the bills too. You know what I mean? So um, the comedy came- started after, and yeah, I'm gonna go uh, take it as far as I can. But that being said, I need to also provide for my kids at this point too. Right. Not um, at, so not, yeah. Not so the, you know, yeah. I I set goals for myself. Like I said, like um, when I first started, I I did it as a bucket list item. Like let me see if I can do this, and it and it went pretty well you know so I said I'm gonna keep on doing it so I said I'm gonna you know by this time I want to be able to do you know a show at this club and I actually reached the goal before uh, the time that I had set and then I set another goal and I'm just keep trying to keep on climbing 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 uh, but again at the same time just trying to stay stable so that I can you know raise my kids and and hopefully it turn my goal for comedy is to get to the point where I can travel a lot more mm-hmm. and bring them with me and so that we can see places together and also, you know, I can do stand up um, you know, around different places and, you know, and that they can experience things as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like you have your priorities straight. You're still passionate about what you're wanting to do, but you've obviously those those two are your your number one priority. And it's yeah. awesome that you can you can do that and provide for them, but also do something that that you wanna, you know, go go after. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah if your kids ever listen to this episode, um, I, I hope they know that they've got a pretty awesome dad. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh man. <laughs> they, they have they have somebody that's 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 definitely worth looking up to. And um, oh, thank it, you. It's nice to know that every time they look up, that you're uh, you're right there by their side. Yeah, I mean, I hate I I hate leaving them and stuff like that um, too. Like, so sometimes I'll, you know, I have a like a family member. You know, if I have a show one night, like, you know, they'll watch watch them. But like, it's not. I don't. I I try not to like be away um, mm-hmm. often. You know what I mean? Like, so I do my shows, um, and but it's like the time uh, when I don't have shows. I'm with them constantly. Every day after work, I'm with them. You know, when I'm not doing shows, we're going somewhere. Um, so it's um, I'm not gonna neglect that part of uh, that part of it. So like everything is basically for them. Like even even though it's fun uh, um, to do stand up and it's like a dream of mine to to keep on moving forward with that. The again, the goal is to get to the level where I can take them places so that they can see new places as I. Um, also can perform in, in different places around the country or the world or whatever, uh, wherever it takes me. Yeah. yeah, you get to experience that 
you get to experience it as a new experience, but they also get to do it with you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. So have you done much traveling with your comedy so far? Uh, a little bit, mostly uh, primarily around Florida and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm in the process of trying to, you know, um, just kind of expand a little bit more in the probably in the next in the coming year or so. Um, but Florida is a big state too, um, mm-hmm. you, you know, and you can cover a lot of ground and try just trying to make a name for myself down here. Um, and then, you know, with social media and everything like that, you can kind of get your uh, your stuff out there a little bit more, um, uh, and then hopefully, but I'm definitely trying to expand over the next, you know, six months to a year to, you know, travel a lot, uh, around a lot more than I have yeah, so far. Florida's got a pretty good comedy scene. I'm sorry, what? Florida's got a pretty good comedy scene, correct? I'm sorry, say that one more time. I'm sorry. I said Florida has a pretty good comedy scene, oh, doesn't it? Oh yeah, and it's it's totally. Um, it's totally different. You go from like Miami to like my area, and then Tampa, or Orlando. Then you have Jacksonville, and the up in Pensacola and the Panhandle, or whatever. I mean, there's pro- it's all different. Um, there's different scenes. I mean, um, you know, one might be more of a college town, whereas one might be like an older population, or it just um, it's really different anywhere you go. Yeah. Um, so you have, yeah, it's interesting. I've been to Florida twice. Yeah. Um, the first time was for a wedding and I stayed <clears throat> on Marco Island. Oh, the, yeah. The, the wedding was in Naples. I felt like it was like old people. So, oh yeah, that's, um, uh, that's 20, uh, Naples is 25 minutes from my house. That's okay. Where, yeah. Yeah. I actually worked there during the day. I work in Naples and Marco Island's a little bit further down from that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but this area is actually a lot of younger families have moved down to the area that I live in. Um, yeah. And somewhat in Naples too, but yeah, you got definitely a, a little bit of an older population. But it's kind of it's picking up. There's a lot of young families from like New England and uh, some from the Midwest and whatnot that have have moved to this area. So they're we'll leaving the winter. They're leaving the winter cold. Well, that was yeah. I was there maybe probably eight years ago, and then yeah. um, last February, a uh, girlfriend and I took a little girls trip and we stayed in. Let's see. We flew into Tampa and then we drove to Miami for like a night. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's a long drive. Yeah, yeah, it was a long drive, but it was fun. <laughs> you I should have waved when you were driving by. You probably passed I, near my yeah, house. You should have right? waved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be cool to see you um, do some traveling and and maybe work your way up to Minnesota sometime. Oh, I would love to. Yeah, Minnesota's got a pretty good comedy scene. Yeah, we have yeah. Acme. Have you heard of Acme Comedy Club? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that that would be great. I actually have some friends that um, moved to Minnesota a couple of years ago that used to live in my neighborhood. So yeah, that'd be cool to go up there and hopefully see some faces that you know that I know and and try out over there. That'd be great. Yeah, just come in like like June through like mm, end of September. Yeah. And then otherwise, you won't, it's you won't be shell shocked. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm good. I'm good. You can you can hit up the state fair if you come like the end of August through the beginning oh, of nice. September. Eat yeah, some definitely. some cheese curds and some deep fried all the deep fried things on a stick. Oh wow, nice! Everything on a stick is good. I think right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. um, so with the the comedy, you're you're doing regular gigs. Are you um? Are you doing any open mics or are you doing like how these gigs that you're doing? Are you how long are your sets generally? Are you up to like an hour long or? I'm not up to an hour. I can um, I do I can do uh, when I'm a, a feature act, which basically the person that comes on before the headliner, uh, which is basically you know where I'm at right now, uh, do about uh, 25 to 30 minutes for those sets. Um, I probably have like probably 45 minutes worth of stuff that I could probably use, but I, I'm probably pretty comfortable just doing like the 25 to 30 right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the headliners, uh, the shows um, that I do, do about 45 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, so, um, right, yeah, so right now, I'm comfortable like 25 to 30. Um, about the open mics, um, I, I kind of differ from some comedians uh, when, when it relates to open mics. Yeah, I, I do them, 
sometimes to work out new material and whatnot. Right. Um, but I only do them at like regular comedy clubs. So um, some people will, uh, whenever there's an open mic night, it doesn't matter where it is. Um, so some people are really into doing getting that stage time no matter where it is, right. um, which is fine for them. But some of those open mics are with, you know, poets and people <laughs> playing guitar and yeah. um, doing whatever on stage. And a lot of those open mics are, they're not there to see comedy. Right. And, and um, like I said, like earlier tonight, like I can't waste my time um, doing this. I had to, I, I want to make the most out of it. And, and basically I think when I, if you do a show like that, sometimes it is not, a, I'm not saying that's a waste of time. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that it sets me up for, it, it's almost like a, a setup for failure where comedy is a real mental thing where you have to feel comfortable and be confident on stage. So if you go to a place where nobody wants to see you and you're trying out new jokes that they're not even listening to, Mm -hmm. It's not gi it's not giving you the right idea yeah. of of uh, where you stand with that joke or that material. I I don't think so. So don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying that you're wasting your time doing that. If you want to do that, fine. But for me, I, I like to perform in front of comedy crowds. People are there to hear comedy. Right. Uh, so so if something doesn't go well, I know okay. Well, at least I tried it and they were listening and um, you know see see where it goes whereas if you know a guy uh, you know some college kid comes up and reads some poem that he wrote and then you know someone else is playing guitar and then i'm supposed to go up and tell dick jokes for <laughs> five minutes it's, i don't think it's gonna work well you yeah. Know? yeah after so, some slam poetry yeah. you gotta try to tell jokes well i feel like you have the right to be picky and i feel like those situations it kind of reminds me of when you say that like the poetry guitar thing it reminds mm -hmm. me of Phoebe from Friends singing like Smelly Cat or something. Yeah, like, exactly. And then you're, you're supposed to go up after that and be like, well, you guys aren't even really listening to what I'm saying, but here I go. Smelly yeah, cat. exactly. So Phoebe shows up and she has 20 of her friends that will come and like, oh my God, that was so great. And she gets off, off stage and they're like so super psyched that she just got up on stage for five minutes and did whatever. Um, and then you're up next and nobody's listening to you. They're talking over you. Yeah. And it's, you know, is that beneficial? I, I kind of made a decision early on that I was like, I'm going to do, I'll do open mic nights once in a while when they're at like legitimate comedy clubs yeah. that are doing, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that makes total it, sense. Yeah. So see how that works, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're, I mean, you're definitely not the, um, the average comedian you've got a lot more going on than most comedians do you know so yeah. that, that makes sense and and i agree too with the the being able to portray confidence on stage because if you don't have that air of confidence on stage people can see that they it's can sniff so that huge. out right away it's so yeah. huge you know you're stuttering yeah. and you're kind of faltering and and trying to figure out you know trying to get the crowd to be engaged with you because half of them are are talking or half of them are are uh um, thinking about the the goth kid who just told some depressing poem, uh, <laughs> right. right before you got exactly. on, and, and everyone's <laughs> feeling all like down, and then you try to tell jokes. <laughs> right. Well, even yeah. Sarge and I have gone and checked out some open mics here in the Twin Cities, and there's been mm -hmm. a few times where we're just like, oof. Yeah. It, it not that their material's bad, but it, it's just the way that they carry themselves on stage, and you can just tell they're super uncomfortable, and yeah. and that kind of resonates with you know the things that they're talking about and you yeah, just you can, can kind of see it and feel it and it it makes me uncomfortable sometimes I know, i'm like, like oh i just want to give you a hug like <laughs> yeah, come yeah, here it's, it's okay you know yeah yeah it can be brutal and with comedy you can get into a rut where like i've seen like there's like an open mic click like a group of people that are like open mic or comedians who they only do open mic nights and they're they think they're the bestest, best friends, you know, they go out and no matter how their material is, how they did that night, they're all patting each other on the back about how great they were. Oh, you killed it tonight. You killed it tonight. And it's not genuine. Right. Okay. I don't need, I don't need people patting me on the back to tell me I was good when I'm not good. Mm -hmm. And so basically what I've done 
is again my business partner who runs Think Fast with me. Um, his name's Ryan, and I have another friend who's a you know veteran comedian um, that I run some material by them. Uh, they both have my sense of humor, and um, I trust what they like their reactions is. Like sometimes I'll tell a joke. I'll like hey, here's a premise that I have, and here's like a, a joke that I came up with, and I'll tell Ryan um, the premise and whatnot, and he'll be like. Yeah, I didn't laugh once. That was that wasn't good. You know what I mean? That's like, good. You don't want and to I kind of and I kind of trust him on that. Like, uh, yeah. because again, we we kind of have like the same mindset when it comes to comedy, and so I might think it. You know, and he said he never. They'll never say don't try it, but they'll be honest and say, yeah, that, I wasn't into that. Mm-hmm. And whereas sometimes you can fall into a group of people that. You know, all the op- open micers who were just patting each other on the back and like every, oh yeah, that was great, awesome, when it wasn't. You right. know, I don't need that, you know what I mean? No, that's not going to so. get you anywhere. Yeah, that's you just don't, right. you don't need a bunch you. of, you don't need a bunch of yes men. Just. No. Yeah, it's like American Idol where all the people, you know, try out for American Idol and they said that they're, you know, my mom said I was a great singer. <laughs> right? Well, you know, because <laughs> she heard me sing in the shower and like, no, you're terrible, you know? So, you know, you, you, I don't want people sugarcoating things. So, like, I'm a I'm a big boy. Like, I can hear some criticism once in a while, so it's no yeah. big deal. Keeps it grounded a little bit, right? Well, yeah, like definitely. You. I like that you've uh, you're you're not wasting time. You're not uh, you're not dealing with um, with the bullshit that can come with uh, with that whole comedy scene. And maybe that's why. Maybe that's a big part of why you are. Um, as good as you are in such a short amount of time, you seem like you're a hard worker. And uh, oh, thank you. And I know, uh, I know it's a stereotype, but generally comedians can can be considered as kind of lazy. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, not all of them, but there are, especially um, some of those some of those ones that are just starting out and uh, obviously don't have the motivation to to really just try to get things going. Well, I don't think it, yeah, I think it is part of the motivation thing, but I also think it's, I don't necessarily think when they're starting out, they know what they're doing. It does. There, you know, you definitely do. There is a, a period where it's you kind of that unknown, like, yeah. where do I go? What do I do? I'm not super comfortable on stage. And I think the whole thing that you have with being in, in the band and the music industry beforehand is def like, you know, people have told you before, that's definitely. Um, something that's helped you just kind of shape this kind of thing that you're doing with the comedy stuff. That's cool. Yeah, it's been it's been a big benefit. Um, like you know, like we we're talking about. Yeah, it's like a huge help for me. And and I thought about this earlier too. You know, I'm 38, so I started comedy when I was like 36. And I thought to myself, oh, I wish I kind of. I, I thought, do, do I wish that I started this years ago, like you know, my early 20s? No. And then I was thinking, and, and I was thinking, you know what? I didn't have any life experience. Yeah, you, you know didn't have I mean? anything like, to say back and, then. <laughs> what would what, you say? I didn't hear I said, that. You I say? said, in your early twenties, you have nothing to say. Well, you can talk about yeah. like bonging beers and like having sex with chicks. That's yeah, about it. It's... Yeah, and and nobody like you know the comedy crowd is like thirties, forties, fifties, sometimes mm-hmm. like sixties, sometimes, and they've been all they've all been through stuff. You know what I mean? They don't need. To hear a twenty-one-year-old talk about smoking weed, you know, and that's only the only premise that they have, you know, right. like um, stuff like that. I mean, um, I mean, I'm a person. I, I don't even. I've never. Even, I don't do drugs or anything like that. But I'm just saying, like they. Um, I, I don't even drink, but they. They were. You know, you have people that come on stage and and just talk about those kind of things. They, there's like Sarge was saying. There's nothing to say. Whereas I think I've been through some stuff now. Um, where now I have stuff to look back on and like, okay, yeah, I can talk about this or, um, you know, comedy is very self-deprecating. So now I finally have things to kind of shit on myself for, you know what I mean? (laughs) After all these these years. So yeah, starting earlier, yeah, fine. If you did that and that was your goal, you know, more power to you. But you, you, you start to think about like why it takes some of these comedians, you know, 11, 12, 25 years to make it, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, what did they have to say early on? You know what right. I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe there's something to that, but, um, 
No, I think um, that makes sense. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. You had nothing to say. That's why it takes so long. You start out in comedy when you're 20 years old. It takes you 10, 15 yeah. years to to gain some uh, some life experience and actually have something to say on stage that anyone, that people want to listen to. You got to do some stuff first. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, you know, the again, I said this earlier, the whole um, you only live once thing, you know, people use that as something to just completely screw up their lives. So, like, you have these comedians who are, like, completely – huge risk takers like they and they'll you know go do crazy stuff in their early 20s or whatever and you know might have a lot more wild stories than i do you know what i mean but you know i mean it's, it's almost like you're forcing yourself to have like these stories to tell on stage whereas like just life is is fucked up enough you know what i mean you can come up with stuff <laughs> just live a little bit you know what i mean right so. yeah <laughs> I like it. Um, so you, um, you've got the uh, the record label. You've got your comedy. Where where can people find you if they if if they wanna they wanna look you up and, and either um, find some music or uh, find the uh, your comedy shows. Um. Well. Well. First of all, the um, the comedy I, I have uh, LarryVenturino dot com is my website. I'm also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Larry Venturino. Um, that's V-E-N-T-U-R-I-N-O. Um, so you can find all my stuff there. I have videos. On, I have a YouTube page that it's, you know, I have some videos up there as well. Um, also at um, Larry Venturino. So if you want to listen to some comedy shows, uh, some of my shows, and all my upcoming events are always updated on my website. Uh, my record label, stinkfastrecords.com. Um, you know, if you're into fast, aggressive music, like punk rock music, you know, even some metal and things like that, um, you know, check us out. It's, you know, it's not stuff you'll hear on the radio, um, but there's a lot of, you know, some legendary bands that, uh, that we've been able to have the honor to work with um, for that style of music um, that we've um, done records for as well as you know up and coming bands from around the world we even have a band from um that we started working with early 2000s um called the geeks they were from they're from south korea and um you know we found them you know um, loved their music um and the really positive message that they were singing about and they were you know really great band and we put out a couple of their records they ended up coming to the united states for a couple of tours and you know we're really all really good friends um so it's been a, a lot of um a lot of fun being able to help a band like that um you know live their dreams and come come to the united states and stuff yeah. like that and put out music so that more people can hear it yeah granted it's not going to be you know they're not as big as britney spears was but um you know, it, it, for this type of music, you know, we got their music out to as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, yeah, but I think the world would be just fine if Britney Spears had never existed. I think, yeah, we, I think exactly. we'd all be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty crazy. You've got a, a punk rock band from from South Korea. That's that's not the, something you hear very often. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have their own stuff going on there, and like. You know, there's so many so many people around the world that are doing great things and are so talented. Um, you know, so when you have sincere, genuine people that you know um, are, are working hard and, and just want to get their uh, their music or their comedy or whatever it is they, out to people, you know, it's it's more motivating to help those people and mm -hmm. and um, you know and try to um, get their their message out as much as possible um that's what we do because yeah. we love learning about new people and experiences and just helping whatever whatever we can do not that we're super amazing i mean we're pretty amazing but just i don't know <laughs> just How wanting wanting to help other people and just getting you know their stories out there and also i think it's awesome for us to learn about people and hear their stories and mm -hmm. Yeah, one be able of the, to share it with people. One of the most yeah. fun fun things about this podcast is is getting to meet the new guests and people that are trying to get their name out there, and, and us being able to help them do that, and um, and really just hearing your stories and, and getting to know you and, and learning about what uh, what brought you to where you're at, your journey so far, and, and what your journey is going to be like uh, moving forward. Um, it's 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 really uh, it's kind of a fulfilling thing. 
Mm-hmm. We, we really like it, and it's uh, kind of our little... All right, I appreciate it. This is an awesome podcast. I've listened to some of the other episodes, too. Is it, You guys do a great job, and that whole philosophy of, you know, reaching out to people and, and helping people just, like, kind of get a voice and, and kind of be heard by other people that may not have heard them before, I mean, my God, like, I appreciate that, like, tremendously. I'm sure everyone, all the other guests and future guests, like, love you for it, too. That's It's really great what you guys do. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Yeah, we like to create a little uh, a little family here with uh, with Sarge approved and our guests. You know, we like to all con- we like to consider um, all of our guests as as friends. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so the uh, you've got um, do you have anything coming up in the in the near future with your comedy or or with the yeah labels? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, I'm, I'm hosting a monthly showcase, again, at Laughing Comedy Cafe in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, basically, six comedians, like, including myself, um, on those nights to, um, you know, we do, like, 15-minute sets and kind of, just kind of, it's kind of like a, like a sampler. You know, it's all headliners and features that tour the country, mm-hmm. um, but may, maybe have not been to the club before. So we, we get up there and um, crowd and come and see a, a few different people that night and it's a lot of fun but um later on um in early 2017 um actually the end of march um we brought um a comedian uh, named dat fan to uh fort myers he's going to be coming he was the original winner of last comic standing oh nice. uh, yeah I've yeah heard of him. Yep. yeah he, he what a story he has i mean um you know uh, basically came from Vietnam, um, basically came from, um, had a, a really a rough time in his life and said, you know what, I'm going to be a stand-up comedian and I'm going to re- really work hard for it. You know, at one point he was living out of his car uh, with his mom and and all of a sudden, like, he kind of rose to the, the level and, and, and won, ended up winning Last Comic Standing. Um, so, you know, he's mostly out in California and the West Coast um, but you know, I helped reach out to him and and say, hey, you better come to the East Coast sometime and and perform down here. So I'm actually opening for him for six shows um, at the end of March. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh, March 30th, March 31st, April 1st, and April 2nd. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, April Fool's weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so so if you're in Southwest Florida, um, come to the area. Um, definitely check it out he's a lot of fun uh should be it'll be his first time in this area so it, it'll be a lot of um i was honored to do the show with them you know again real uh, from you know i don't i don't know him really personally uh, um well but um you know for every everything i hear about the guy he's like real genuine nice guy real hard worker promotes himself and and really tries to um do the best for people like you know he's even if you look at his website um He's doing. He does a lot of charity work and shows to help um, with uh, for children who are you know sick and um, having other issues and and whatnot. And so he seems like a really great guy and uh, yeah. happy to be opening for him. And he's got one so. heck of a smile. He go what? He's got one heck of a smile. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you should that. Uh, oh, can, can you can you do me a favor, yeah. Larry, on that April first show? When you yep. when you open for Dat Fan, can you can you uh, I- introduce the show like, are you guys ready for some comedy? And then be like, psych, and just drop the mic and walk off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. April just Fools. Completely okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Imagine that. Goodbye. That'd be awesome. the show's over. Yeah, and then, show's and then, over. And then you can come back on. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Walk, yeah. walk back on. <laughs> I love yeah. it. So, so people can check out that schedule at uh, laughincomedycafe dot com. Yeah, absolutely. You can buy tickets, make reservations. Um, all they have to do is call and say that they're coming, and you know they can pay at the door too. But um, okay. yeah, and uh, check out my, my website. I always up um, every time I get booked, I, the show goes up on my website immediately. Um, and so, like, I'm always up to date with stuff. And uh, you know, I have the pleasure of you know perform with a lot of great comedians over the the short time i just um just opened for pablo francisco uh, two that. weekends ago yeah, that's um, awesome. yeah, yeah and that was a lot of fun and you know to be able to share the stage with somebody who's 
the caliber of, of him um, mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. You know, big crowd, everything. Um, it, it was just a great time. So always updating my stuff. Um, and, you know, I know I'm not for everybody, and but I really work hard at writing my stuff and trying to, um, you know, put some thought into my, um, my material and, and kind of make a story. All my sets I try to piece together as a story uh, and have things blend into each other. Um, yeah, I could tell and, when I was listening to you that everything flows into each into the you know the next joke real well. Mm -hmm. You know, you segue well and everything. Oh, thank and you. It doesn't yeah, sound it's, choppy or anything. It you, you really have um, a really fluid set when you're on stage there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was the same like as being in a, in a band. Like you know, you 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 know, you have a set list, and the set list basically is okay. When this the end of this song has this chord, and that would sound awesome if you ring out that chord and go into the next song. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so it's kind of like the same thing. Like you want things to sound like they fit, or uh, you know, look like they fit, and um, so that's what I, I try to do. So, yep. Awesome. awesome. And remind us your your website is just your name basically, right? dot com. Yeah, la yeah, larryventurino.com. Perfect. Uh yeah. So I appreciate it if anyone wants to check it out and uh send me a message or, you know, comment on my my stuff, you know, you like me, hate me, whatever, you know. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> it's no big deal as long as you, you check it out, that'd be great. Yeah. We awesome. Got, we got to try to get you up to Minnesota sometime, Larry. Well, uh, I want oh. to I want to see you on stage at Acme. Ah, yeah, hopefully one day that'd be amazing. <laughs> I want to see every single comedian that's been on this podcast um, perform in Minnesota sometime and be able to shake hands with each and every one of you. Oh man, that'd be awesome! Yeah, yeah. yeah well, one day, hopefully, we'll, we'll see what happens. That'd be, you know, I look forward to that. Yeah. Any yeah, any opportunity I get. If anyone can make it happen, you can. Yeah. Heck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think this is a good good time to wrap this up. Yeah. We, All right. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. This is yeah. a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's, oh, it's no been uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It all started on Instagram. Yeah. yeah Instagram absolutely. Channel. Oh my god! Like I can just <laughs> get in contact with people and yeah, it's and, pretty cool. And, and make new friends and, and yeah. help each other out. That's amazing. I pr really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it too. So. All right, well, it's great. Check out Larry Venturino. He's definitely 100% a funny, funny guy. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> he's, 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 got, uh, he's got my seal of approval. He's Sarge approved. Yeah, Sarge approved. And I feel like I already – no, I don't feel like I know he has a good heart too, which makes me even like him even more. Oh, man, thanks. All right. One of the good guys. <laughs> One of the good guys. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, Larry. Uh, check, no problem. Check this guy out online. Check out his gigs. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter. He's on Facebook. And he's Instagram. On Instagram. Just look him up. Larry Venturino. V E N T U R I N O. Don't miss out on this guy. Yeah. Hey, Larry. I hope you and your boys have a, a super happy, doopy, merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh, Thank great. You. You, you guys too. Thank you so much for having Thank me you. again. Have a good night. Okay. You too. Thanks, Larry. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Yep. Okay, that was our guest, comedian Larry Venturino. Absolutely awesome guy. Funny, funny individual and uh, a man of many talents. Yes, and a good heart. Yes, Loved great. having him on. He's a good, good dude, and uh, I look forward to uh, to talking with him again. Yeah, excited to see where he goes. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Um, this episode, as you know it, has been sponsored by National Survival Center. You know they have all the gear you need. If you're looking for gear, they've got it. You want to go camping? You need a tent? You can go to National Survival Center. You need a badass mummy sleeping bag? If you're planning on uh, going camping and you're worried it's going to get chilly, you can find sleeping bags that are going to fit you for the summertime in the warm months or you can find ones that you can keep warm in negative 30 degree temperatures if you're feeling uh, ballsy enough to go camping in the cold um they've got things that you might look for if you're a prepper and you want to stock up on your survival gear uh take a take a gander over at national survival center and you'll probably find anything that you're looking for um the prices are good and cheap because they're not looking at making a big profit by jacking up the profit margin like the big box stores they just want to be able to provide good quality uh gear to their customers and uh 
They've got free shipping on pretty much all their gear. So go check them out at nationalsurvivalcenter.com or survivedonsuffer.com. Make sure that you're prepared when the shit hits the fan. National Survival Center, survive, don't suffer. Don't even think about suffering. <laughs> you can find Sarge Approved um, on pretty much every podcast platform out there. iTunes, uh, Spreaker, SoundHound, or SoundCloud, Audio Mac. we're on all of them. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Sarge Approved. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, we still need to get a Pinterest page. Yeah, I haven't really done a whole lot with that. We'll, we'll get a Pinterest page going. Um, so, yeah, follow us and uh, follow all the awesome guests that we've had on. And um, we're going to play out this episode with a song by one of my favorite bands, MC Culla. That's Culla, C-U-L-L-A-H. MC Culla, this song is called I Got a Plan to Rule the World. Thanks for being with us. Bye. Later, fuckers.